Today is the 5th of October, 1975, and I'm interviewing Dr. Zalman Grinberg, G-R-I-N-B-E-R-G. And the first question that I wanted to ask was, uh, when and under what circumstances did you first meet a Jewish chaplain, mm -hmm. an American Jewish chaplain? I think the first Jewish chaplain I met was uh, a Rabbi Abraham Klausner. And he came to the hospital of St. Cotillion. I don't know if you know the history of the hospital of St. Cotillion and how it was conquered and uh, it was in a monastery, but the Germans converted it in a German military hospital and then we converted it to the Displaced Persons Hospital. But it was devoid of supplies, of clothes, of medication. And then, what is it? My problem. I get it. And then, I don't know, I, I think on the third or fourth day, Rabbi Klausner appeared. We had first an, another officer there who has done also wonders for the hospital. Uh, we, I'll never forget the, 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 the sentence of this officer. I'll, in a moment I'll, I'll give you the name of the officer. Yes. He said, I have to go to join my unit, yes. But I don't won't follow military orders. I'll follow the orders of humanity and stay here and and help you in the hospital. And he was the first uh, uh, American officer who participated in the burial of the first Jew in San Cotillion, who was a rabbi, a Hungarian rabbi, yes. And he delivered the most wonderful speech, yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll only mention a few sentences. He said, maybe with this burial we are burying the unknown Jew of Europe. Maybe he is the luckiest after so many years to have a ritual and a religious burial. And uh, and he also tried to help us, tried to bring medications and clothes, but he, he was uh, he was limited. Uh, he he was also he was an intelligence officer, so he had to uh, screen the inmates, the German inmates of the hospital, if there are some uh, important Nazis and so on. Now, who's the officer? I'll give you the, his name in a moment. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, then Dr. Then Rabbi Klausner appeared. Rabbi Klausner appeared like a messiah. Like a uh, messiah? Messiah, yes. Yeah. Because he was so inventive. He was so efficient. He worked 24 hours a day, yes. He brought clothes, medication, food. How we managed to do it is, uh, is, is, uh, is a miracle, yes, but he has done it, yes. He has done it, yes. And he became an authority among the Sherita Plata. And he started to organize the Sherita Plata first in Santo Tillian, and then he was the uh, he helped to organize in Munich the Central Committee of Liberated Jews. And I was the first president of the Central Committee of uh, Liberated Jews. There, there was a, a conference before. The conference was not in Munich. The conference was in Pelderfing, yes. It's one of the camps you must have heard, yes. And there was uh, the representatives of all all the camps, and and they elected the Central Committee of Liberated Jews. The activities of Klausner 
he was tireless and I don't know if I'll succeed to remember everything, but I think that he was very helpful, if not the, if even not instrumental, the main the main instrumental factor in uh, in getting a hospital by the name of Gauting. Gauting is a hospital for for, for TB people, yes. And Gauting, Gauting, it was very important because the people were undernourished, yes, and they, were, they suffered some pulmonary tuberculosis, and it was a well-established uh, hospital because also the Germans, they used it as a, as a pulmonary hospital, yes, and uh, this was it. Then I think he also, in Munich, you know the name of the hospital. Uh, he also conquered. This was a fight, yes, with the municipality, with the mayor. Do you know the name of the hospital? Uh, yeah, Bogenhausen. Yeah. Um, Klauser fought, and then he did, and then, then this was also uh, one of the displaced persons' hospitals. The biggest displaced hospital remained uh, Santa Clean, yes, because it has a surgical department, it had a urological department, and uh, and, uh, uh, and and it was uh, in the beginning it wasn't well uh, equipped, but after a while it was uh, well well equipped, yes, even well equipped for ritual. Uh, Boris Miller, and uh, it, it became a Jewish medical center. So, so I remember those three hospitals where Klausen was very instrumental. Then he was instrumental in organizing the the central uh, committee. I suppose you know that. A couple of months after the war, there were every Jewish organization wanted a part in rendering solace and help and uh, uh, to the Sheret of Leita, yes. Uh, joint was there, joint, uh, AGDC, and Edward uh, uh, Barbo was very helpful and he came to visit. Now, uh, Rifkin, at that, that time, he, uh, he was the first uh, aide to, uh, for Jewish affair to Eisenhower. And I think the second was Judah Neidich. No, Neidich was the first. And then uh, Simon Rifkin was the uh, first civilian. Neidich was first. He was... Uh, oh, yes? Yes. Uh, I, I, I didn't... Uh, uh, now, I knew so many uh, chaplains, I don't remember their names, but in general, it, I'll, I'll tell you, it wouldn't be an overstatement. Without the chaplains, many, many survivors would have died. The chaplains gave emotional support, spiritual support, religious support, and, and financial support and financial support, yes. And uh, they were more or less neutral between all the factors, the Jewish agency, the AJDC, the ORT, the, uh, uh, the, the UNRWA, the delegation from, uh, from Israel, you know, there was a delegation from Israel and, uh, and the Ben-Gurion, uh, uh, organized uh, and persuaded, uh, persuaded, yes, uh, uh, Eisenhower to bring the cultural mission, the books, right. the, the, the booklet, we call, mm -hmm. we call it, yes. Uh, I think with, between all the things, and everybody wanted the best, yes, 
and I think the uh, rabbis, the chaplains, were a positive enzyme, a catalyst, yes, a, a catalyst, because there was a little bit of friction there and there and the different uh, of our opinion. In the meantime, the Jewish, the Sherita Plata, organized in, in different Zionist parties, yes, and uh, this this was also the breeding ground of uh, of friction. And I think uh, uh, the, the 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 chaplains played played a very good role, yes, unification role mutual understanding, mutual trust, yes, uh, always pointing out, yes, we have one, one goal uh, to, to leave Germany, and at that time was uh, to, uh, at the beginning especially, was to leave Germany to Israel, yes, afterwards it was to leave wherever one desires to leave. Right. All right, this is it. Fine. Uh, now, if we could go back to the question of Saint Cecilia, mm -hmm. is the account that uh, you that you find in the Redeemers by Leo Schwartz the proper um, the way you know it, the way it took place? I tell you, I read the Redeemers thirty years ago. I, I think. See, okay. yeah. Well, then, could you tell me again how how it came about that uh, Saint Cecilia became a hospital? A Jewish hospital. St. Cecilia never became, it was, it was a German hospital right. in, a, in a monastery and uh, I think in this book that it is, uh, I, I described it, we were in no man's land near a village by the name of Schwabhausen and we were starving and dying and we went to the Boob, uh, to, to the boom, Mr. Burgermeister. Burgermeister, and we asked for help, and he said, "No help. The Germans uh, have won the war." And then I went the second time. Yes, I'll never forget. Yes, and I said to him, "A Burgermeister, do you understand German?" Yeah, a Burgermeister, Sie wissen nicht was. Weil das Deutschland hat den Krieg verloren. Gucken Sie durch das Fenster. So he went and looked through the vent to the window. Then he turned around and he said, Mein Herr, nehmen Sie doch bitte Platz. <laughs> and, uh, and then we started to work with him to find a hospital, and he told us the first that the nearest hospital is in San Cotillian, yes, and the best way to get uh, to get ambulances is to get through the army. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, and uh, and uh, I forgot still the name of this uh, captain. My wife, is, she knows the name, I'm sure. Uh, uh, he he provided the first uh, uh, the first ambulances, and uh, there they didn't know there in Santo Tidian that the Germans lost the war, and there was a superintendent, the director of the hospital. His name was Maya, and. Uh, and this officer came in with me, yes, and he told to Dr. Meyer, he said, from now on you are not the director of the hospital anymore. Dr. Grimberg is the director of the hospital, yes. And, uh, and then we started to bring in more and more patients and more patients, more doctors, Jewish doctors or two. Mm -hmm. And this is the way we occupied uh, some team. And, uh, what was in Redeemers? About the same, mm -hmm. same, same account. Mm -hmm. um, now you say uh, Rabbi Klausner came in shortly after that, yeah. and he um, he started helping you in every way. He was he was tireless. Yes, he worked twenty four hours. Yes, 
he disappeared and came back with the twelve tracks of clothes or twelve tracks of food, yes. And uh, what do you think uh, might have happened had he not been there? Hmm? What do you think might have happened had Klausner not been on the scene at that moment? I think it was a catastrophe, yes. Uh, uh, you really think that he was crucial? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, of course. He was, uh, he was crucial. He was, uh, he, 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 he was a, a accumulation of energy, yes. Uh, you see, uh, uh, this is a theoretical uh, question, what, what would have been when he would have been. Maybe it would have been another one, yes, I don't know, yes, but he was there, and he's done it. Well, was there anyone else who offered their assistance mm. in the same way, way? No, no, there was no other, ch at the time, uh, any other chaplain. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how did the, then... But, he, the, the, but the people of the, sh of the shirt at Plata, who were in a better shape, yes, they mm. helped him. Mm -hmm. and, and he knew how to mobilize the goodwill. Mm -hmm. what, what type of things aside from giving food? Did he speak to the people? Yes, yes, yes. There was, I remember there was the, f the first uh, celebration of the, of the liberation, yes. There was two people who talked. One, you know his name, I forgot his name. I don't know if he's alive anymore. He was a rabbi of the Jewish Brigade. He wrote a book about the Sheret HaPreta. Do you know his name? No, I don't remember the name. He was... It was Rabbi Herzog from, uh, from Israel. No, 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 no. The rabbi... And, and then... Uh, then uh, uh, Rabbi Klausner had a phase when he was a very good speaker. Mm -hmm. this, this, uh, this, this activity, yes, was on not only mechanical activity, it was verbal activity, yes, and he was very articulate and he was able to really to uh, express his the feelings and the thoughts of the people. He, he needed, this is the way he mobilized the, the help. I told you before, yes, the people who were more or less uh, in, uh, in good shape, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, he needed them, yes, uh, to unpack, to pack, to, uh, to organize warehouses. Mm -hmm. But this was a later stage. Mm -hmm. No, this was in the beginning too, in the beginning. Yeah, also in the later stages. So we have St. Atelian, and uh, then you mentioned the fact that there was a famous meeting at Feldafing where Irving J. Smith was in charge. That was Irving J. Smith. Oh, an American, yes? Right, an American. From Ohio? From uh, Indianapolis, Indianapolis oh, Indiana. Yeah. I don't know, was he there? He was in charge of Feldafing. He was the Jewish, uh, he was a, oh, an officer. Uh, oh, yes, I am. But in Feldafing was the, the meeting where the Central Committee of Liberated Jews were, was, right. was founded. Right. And By the headquarter of the, the, the Jews was in Munich, Munich right, yes. At the Deutsches Museum. Yes. Mm -hmm. But um, do you remember anything about that famous meeting? I think it was July 1st, mm -hmm. 1945. This was uh, not the founding meeting? Or the founding the meeting, yes. Yes, I, I remember the founding meeting, yes. Well, what took place during that time? What was the role of Rabbi Klozner in that? What was the role of Rabbi Klozner? I remember there was no fight who who will be president of the Central Committee, yes. There was no No, fight. there was no fight, yes. Uh, 
you see the, the fact that I was director of uh, Santo Tilian and I was known as the uh, founder of Santo Tilian, yes, uh, it gave me so much authority, yes, that, uh, uh, that I was accepted uh, without any fight as a, as a director. Mm -hmm. Now, well, what would you say the rabbi's role was in, in the Central Committee, basically? In the Central Committee, yes. It is said that he ruled the Central Committee. Is that uh, an overstatement? You see, I am not in a good position to... I, I was officially the president of the Central Committee, but I was also the director of Santo Tijin. Mm -hmm. I lived in Santo Tijin and I worked in Santo Tijin, and I came maybe every second day or every day. Uh, uh, I remember a time when the Central Committee was, was dependent on him when they needed a house or needed uh, furniture or when they needed this thing, yes, and uh, nobody else could have been. Now, uh, afterwards, when the, uh, the political parties uh, took over, he, he, he couldn't have been the man who runs the, the Central Committee, yes? Mm -hmm. Well, at what point would you say the uh, it passed on to somebody else? At what stage? At what year? What time? You see, I left Germany very early. I left Germany in nineteen uh, in nineteen forty six in June, July nineteen forty six, and after I was uh, I left Germany, the president became. Uh, uh, the, he was the vice president before, yes, and uh, I hope he's still alive. Uh, do you know him? Do you know his name? Which one? Who was the president after me? I don't remember his name. Hmm? Strager. His name is Strager. Strager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't found him. Hmm? I haven't found him. No, he's in his order, yes. Yeah, but I don't know if he's alive. So he was an elderly man, yes. And <coughs> so Trager was Trager was alive, and and uh, it is a very difficult question. Was Klausner running the Central Committee? No, he couldn't run. Chaim Yachin wouldn't have learned. The, 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 the well, let's say, let me put it to you this way. From the period of, let's say, July, August 1945, through the period in which you, until you left, was he, was he the one who was running it? No. No. No, no, he couldn't run it. He couldn't run it, yes. But you were still dependent upon him in many ways. But in a, in, a, in a positive way, yes, if he wanted to, he, if we needed something, he said, uh, or we needed a hospital, Bo Bogenhausen, yes. Right. And uh, I know, I remember there was a fight and a fight and a fight, and he, he won the fight, yes. Mm -hmm. That was with Dr. Marvin Linick. Mm -hmm. And then the, the doctor who was the director of the hospital, he's here in New York, you can talk to well, him. But I spoke to him. That's who? Linick. Hmm? Marvin Linick. No, it's not Marvin Linick. Unless he changed his name? Is a tall fellow? No, this fellow is a rather uh, heavy fellow. No. Not so tall. Maybe he was, was a Jewish man. Yes, a Jewish man, huh? But he was not the first director. The first director was somebody else. I don't know. The one that uh, Abba Klausner told me to speak to was Marvin Linick. Um, uh, as far as I remember, the first director was... Uh, <coughs> I'll tell you in a moment. Let, let's go on. Okay, um, fine. I have to give you two names, yes? 
Now, uh, do you remember the package program that Rabbi Klausner started? Package? When, when was this? This was in uh, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur of 1945, which would have been September or October of that year. Package to whom? Package program that began uh, from people all over the United States, started sending uh, packages to Rabbi Max Wall, and uh, there were warehouses full of, of material that was distributed by the Central Committee. I know that you talk about it, you revive my memory, yes, but I, have, I don't have a clear memory about it. Okay, fine. What about the Sherry Kaplay Ka volume? The list of names? Yes, this I remember, of course. It's, uh, there were these Sherry Kaplay Ka volumes, and there was also, uh, he was, he was, was helpful in organizing uh, the Yiddish bag was the Unser name? Bag. Unser bag, yes. You don't have that, do you? I have it, yes. Oh, you do have one. Uh, yes. Would it be possible to um, <coughs> uh, Xerox some of that? Yeah. I have a, I have the whole volume, yes. Uh, Unser bag, yes. Because you can't get a hold of it in Israel, they don't have it. I was looking at Yad Vashem, they don't have it. And here, and here nobody has it? Mm, no. Did you talk to other people from the share of the plate uh, here in this country? I'm looking for them. It's very difficult to locate them. Okay. It's very difficult. Uh, it, it depends what, what kind of information you want. Well, I'm only interested in the chaplain. Well, uh, chaplain's a... Uh, how many years is it? 45, 55, 65? It's 30 years, yes. It's uh, 30 years. It's a long time. A long time. And, uh, but there are many, many, uh, many books written. Mm -hmm. But not about this particular aspect. Now, uh, Rabbi Klausner told me that um, I think it was in 45 you were supposed to go to uh, Atlantic City to speak uh, at the UJA mm -hmm. and at uh, the last moment they said that they didn't have any room for you, which was not really true, but that's what the story that they gave well, you. Well, for me? Yeah. You were supposed to go to, to address mm -hmm. the uh, convention. But I, I was in another convention. You went in 1946. Yes. Now, Rabbi Klausner says that he got you there. American Jewish Conference. Yeah, you spoke at the American Jewish Conference and you spoke throughout uh, America. Yeah, I spoke to, uh, at, that, at that time, American Jewish Conference was a, a, a roof organization of all American uh, organizations. Right, yes, right. but you don't, you don't remember Rabbi Klausner's efforts to get you to, to the States? He had to do it illegally? He gave you a false passport? In fact, he got into some trouble because of that, because they came after him and you said... See, I, this is 45. Whatever America has done, yes, yeah. whatever America has done was, was legal. In, uh, no, you later uh, came back in a, <laughs> on a legal test, but I'm not trying to suggest yeah. that you didn't here. But I'm, I'm simply saying at that point... No, I was what do you mean? The, I was with three generals in the same plane. Mm -hmm. This I remember, yes, and we landed in Bermuda, and uh, I lived with them in the same hotel, yes? Mm -hmm. So how can I be in the underground? Well, I, you know, he, he got you through, he went on a military plane, mm -hmm. but he said that to you uh, it was an illegal... Uh, it could, I don't deny it, yes, but... Uh, you don't the, remember. The, the, I, I don't remember, I don't remember many things, yes. but this I remember because this was impressive, mm -hmm. that I was with three generals in the same uh, plane and... Uh, mm -hmm. 
Now you mentioned Judah Nadich. Uh, could you uh, yeah. be specific about what you saw him do? How was he helpful to you? Judah Nadich, I think he was one of the Jewish American officers who contacted us and uh, uh, and uh, and he was he, he was helpful. Yes, we presented the problem. In what way? Hmm? In what way was he helpful? Hmm? Oh, well, we, we, for instance, we said we, we didn't have medication, yes, or we, we didn't have underwear, or we didn't have, uh, uh, after, after all, we were deprived of everything, yes. And then he brought them, them, um, uh, he, no, I remember this, uh, he brought Mr. Uh, uh, Vinick, not Vinick, uh, uh, the lawyer. You said he was after him. Oh, Rifkin. Rifkin, Rifkin, yes. Judge Rifkin. Yes. And I remember they, we, they, we had, uh, we had dinner in our house, and Rifkin brought me a, a present, a, a menorah. I still have the menorah from Rifkin, yes. Uh, Rifkin is a very warm. Uh, do you know the Rifkin? Yes. No, I haven't spoken to him. And I thought that they belonged together, yes. For, for, at that time, I thought that uh, uh, that uh, uh, that uh, Judah Nidich is the military aide of uh, Rifkin. No. No, so was wrong. Well, they got together and... See, there was a question after the Earl, ha Earl G. Harrison report in uh, July, August of 1945. And there was a lot of pressure put on Eisenhower to get some type of Jewish advisor. And he decided that perhaps uh, a chaplain would be, for the moment, good. So Judah Nadich was picked. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, uh, Eisenhower decided that uh, he would rather have a civilian. Mm -hmm. And Rifkin was the first, and he was mm -hmm. followed by a number of others. Mm -hmm. That, you see, through this year, yes, many things have happened. You see, the shock for the entire Jewish world, what happened in Germany, and uh, many really didn't know, yes and uh, everybody wanted to send delegation. I remember, the, uh, I think it was a cultural delegation of Leivik, uh, Air Force. Well, that was later on. Mm -hmm. That wasn't in 45. But I was there. I was still there. It was late, it was late in 46. Late in, uh, must be the middle of 46. In the middle of 46. And uh, you see, in Le Leivik, uh, Air Force and this uh, uh, singer, uh, what was her name? Do you, do you remember her name? No, I remember there was a cultural delegation sent by the World mm -hmm. Jewish Congress. Yeah. And they had a lot of trouble with UNRWA, by the way. That's right. And they, they, therefore I mentioned it. And they came back, yes, and they, uh, especially the Navy, yes, right. uh, and Air Force, yes. And they, they reported m m many negative things, yes. And there was a feedback, and uh, there was, a, uh, and, and of course, the culmination of the uh, of the committee that came was the Anglo-American Committee, right, yes. Right, right. And I appeared as a witness there, yeah. And uh, this is this is when I met Bartley Crum. Yes, he was uh, American, uh, right. and there was the. Uh, he was British. Uh, hmm. He was British. Bartley Crum is American. 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 Uh, okay. He's a Republican that uh, Truman sent. He uh, uh, was very sympathetic. He, oh, was very. Sad. He wrote a book. Yes. He wrote Still can see. Behind the silken, silken curtain. The curtain, yes. Behind the silken curtain, yes. And, uh, and many, many other committees. Uh, I think the Arbiter Ring and the Arbiter Verband and uh, everybody sent. Everybody uh, yeah. uh, we were for a while we were busy to, to answer questions there. there. Mm -hmm. Do you remember, you mentioned on the phone uh, this Falsner-Warburg fight. Could you be more specific? 
Warbird? Yeah. It's not Warbird per se. The Wars of Fight. I, I, I wouldn't call it a fight, yes, or whatever. A difference of opinion between the AJDC and Klausner at one time. Mm-hmm. You see, they were in the same office, in the mm-hmm. Central Committee office, yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, you talk to Anna uh, Ann Lieber, yes. Right, right. She, she's a better uh, yeah. expert on this than I, yes. I, 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 don't, I really don't know. Yeah, that's 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 okay, fine. Yeah. Um, I think that's basically uh, it, unless you wanted to say anything further. No, I don't know. Now you see the history of the share plate uh, at the top should be written, yes, but it shouldn't be written uh, limited to the chaplains. Because the chaplains were a very important part, yes, a mm-hmm. positive part, yes, but uh, sociologically and uh, and uh, well, the uh, and the fact of uh, liberation and uh, and the liberation in a in a land which lost the war, yes, mm-hmm. but lost the war and. At the same thing, time the liberated lost their war too. They lost the place where to go, they were displaced persons. Right. And uh, uh, so, from this point of view, yes, there's a lot of things to, 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 to say, yes. Okay, thank you. I don't know. Uh, for me, all the chaplains were, uh, were were the same. Yes, after living in this country, I know there are uh, there are conservatives, orthodox, uh, 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 and uh, reforms. Yes. Yeah. How was it in Germany? They were all from from all the denomination. Yes. Mm. But there, of course, there was not uh, there was not a real a differentiation, yes, between uh, no. uh, with, uh, there was no problem of that sort. Let me 